Go greetings. I am Lies and I use she her. And I am Scandal and I use they them. And let's, let's play, play a game together. together. Yeah. Mm. I'll be right back, okay? Don't you do stop being adorable. And don't open the door. The concerned face. Well, you don't be, don't stop being adorable. Mm. Uh, not even for you. Especially not for me. I'll open it myself. If I can do that, it isn't me. I... The fact that you say that with such confidence concerns me. No, I know Muriel, so the kind of specific spells that he has are very specific. But are they going to make him look like you? No, he knows how to open their own, his own house. What are you talking about? Uh, you just said if you were at the door, but you couldn't open it, then it wasn't you. Why all... would he knock at his own place? No, but that wouldn't be you. Yes, but I said don't answer the door. He's not going to knock at his own house. But if I can't do that, it isn't me. No, but if I can simply open the door on my own, which is what I'm talking about. <laughs> that makes a shiver run down my spine. See, correct. Going a doppelganger of you might show up and not be able to open the door. That's creepy. Uh-huh. Oh, I got it. Yeah, no, no, I got that. Faust and I look at each other, and Astra slips out the door. The fire will be low soon. Then the room will be cast in total darkness. It'll feel great. Ah. And I'll sleep in mud. It might. <laughs> you know what? Warm, damp furs. <coughs> and un- mud. Warm, damp mud. Do my full body. Mm. It's like a spa day. Yeah. <laughs> spa day, spa day. Spa day. In total darkness. It's, it's too bad I don't know how to make light. Hey, wow! <laughs> that spell that I could do so easily with every room. question. Now I'm like, what is light? <laughs> what will happen when I am cast in into darkness? darkness? <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it. You got it. I cup my palm ah! and gather a weak light. <laughs> Faust slides over to me and lays her head at the crook of my elbow. Faust. Because I can't have a nice, powerful, strong light. Like, perhaps in some of the other routes, because I don't know they exist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do is summon weak light. <laughs> Sometimes! <laughs> okay, the magical properties of spells, you're just like, you summon light. Okay, if you just summon light, yeah, sure, that could look like anything, right? But someone going, summon powerful light, summon torch light. That's a very specific thing. Summon candlelight. Summon candlelight. Now. Poing. <laughs> poing, 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 poing. Ta-da! <laughs> summon vampire hunter D bloodlust light. Uh, summon chandelier. Oh, <laughs> de- eh! <laughs> a wild chandelier has appeared. Ah! <laughs> uh, the crook of my elbow. She winds up my arm as I get to my feet. Asra's half dry coat swinging around me. As I walk around, mostly you know, you. they had an opportunity to draw his beautiful arms and they didn't do it. They did not. They could have just drawn him without most of his clothes on, looking hot in his undershirt. Like I really do, do find it be very funny, but I'm like, uh, based on what you said, we. I'm pretty much naked. You're gonna really tell me that that's Asher's quote. Coat again. Shirt that again. Uh, under S- dry, half dry coat swinging around me. One, we acknowledge it's wet, and two, we probably covered it in mud because we're covered in mud. <laughs> uh, but three. Mm. <laughs> 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 yes, mud. 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 Anyway, I was just say. Um, also, if it's just like, if it's supposed to cover us all the way. It again suggests we are short, because it definitely doesn't cover his groin. I was a... I thought that thing was pretty I mean, long. It's kind of, yeah, I'm like, no, no, that's like down but like... I don't like... think he can close it, though. I don't think he's ever fucking tried. I don't know if it is wide enough to close. I don't know if he's tried. Anyway, uh, at any rate, so we're so I, I, pretty I, naked, I think. I think we are. It's like that sort of hanging open bathrobe experience, maybe? Uh-huh, really aggressive hanging open bathrobe. You let it boop. We couldn't, boop, uh, I, I, Kohai boop. could not pull it closed even if they wanted to because they have large titties. Well, and also just they are large in general, but I'm like, yes. and they're cute and they are soft and mm-hmm. I love them. They I are just cute like, and thicker than Astra. They, they are, uh-huh. which is also why I'm like, they're about Astra's height. Slash our Azra's height. So uh-huh. the answer is, excuse me? Let me give you my clothes. I don't think my arms will fit to the sleeves. 
I would just drape it over my shoulders. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, like this. Okay. I look and like then, a wizard. And then you, <laughs> you have a scarf, and I would just drape that in front of me, and then it would be that sort of decorative where you have like cleavage, but nothing too much is showing. And if you panned back, you'd be in real trouble because the coat <laughs> doesn't cover anything lower. Yeah. Neither does the scarf. <laughs> but at the top, it would look fine and sexy, you know? Neither does his shawl. I wonder why they... Okay, so the thing is, is like, I was kind of thinking about it. And I was like, so... They call it a scarf, they but call it, it doesn't a scarf, look like a scarf. And I'm like, to me, it looks like it's much larger. So it looks like it's a shawl. It also looks like it's a loop. Yeah. So I, I get more <laughs> of the impression of like, yeah, like, um... A shawl but also or, like a shawl with other, a other, cat with with what like a, a little path in there for, for like it's hollow yeah, yeah it's, it has it's to a be. hollow fabric like it, it was just you know anyway there are ragged cobwebs in every corner even though it's getting dark and i have a weak light i can see them very clearly and i guess i have walked around the whole thing or maybe just standing at the center all the walls are about two feet away because it's a very small small cabin muriel i do not move move once i am inside it is my box what i do <laughs> is Point. i i walk inside and i can reach my bed and i can reach my shelves and i can reach the fire all from one place it's perfect like i said it's a box <laughs> it, it fits he sits perfect yes <laughs> muriel is now a cat yes if anyone wants to draw muriel with cat ears i'm down uh -huh. right every corner and then earthy smell you did not notice the earthy smell before, even though the whole thing is made of earth and okay. tree, but it's okay. It reminds me of someone. A miserable howl echoes through the forest, because I can tell a happy howl and a neutral howl from a miserable howl. I mean, so the I thing is, okay, is. that actually might be a character assumption. It's a miserable sound, because some people really think wolf howls are miserable sounds. Miserable sound versus the howl is miserable. No, it just says a miserable howl. It doesn't say that that's the state of the world. Uh, such a miserable storm. I hear yeah, a miserable it's a, storm. And this, that, it's, it's my opinion. It's like, okay. it, yeah, like it is just, it could just be an opinion. I now, based on point. the way that they like to write this story, the word of your player, which, the word of the character is basically law, which is weird. The, the wolf is miserable. Which is strange. And Faust's idly curling tail goes stiff. Still. A, uh, still, sorry. A wolf. It's a good thing I don't have to worry about Asra. Animals love him. I have seen so many animals around him, apparently. I guess. I guess? We haven't now, but I have in my time, you know. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We uh. have seen specifically two animals around Asra. One of which is his imp sparkle companion, and the other of which is potentially another sparkle companion, which they've never really mentioned. Which one? The beast. Oh, that's fair. Because I'm like, how the hell is that thing telepathic? The only other thing we've ever had a connection with in this entire series is literally, quote, your animal familiar. That's true. Maybe he has two familiars. <coughs> maybe, maybe he does. Maybe it's what you suppose. It's a chimera, and it was psychic before it was combined, and so it can talk to everyone. Uh, okay, that's fine. just terrible. Someone's watched Full Metal Alchemist, and they're just not going to admit it because it'd be too horrible. Yeah, well, you uh -huh. know. Hmm. Um, my teeth start chattering again. They realize the fire is down to a glow. I keep moving for reasons. In one direction, the light in my palm gets bigger. I follow its lead to a nook in the corner of the room. Because it isn't determined by my power or usage of the spell, it's just interacting <coughs> with my environment. It's a heat-seeking missile. It is now a dowsing rod for plot. <laughs> <laughs> a plot dowsing rod. Perfect. Be a plot rod. Quick, okay. Quickly. Summon a small soft light and turn until it gets brighter. If you've ever lost the plot, you will find it that way. Yeah, that's exactly how it works in my life too. Uh -huh. I just go, I where's just, the plot? Quick! I, say, I just can't summon light in real life, so that's why I get lost. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. a, a nook in a corner of the room, which I can see from here because I can see the cobwebs already. Because cobwebs are... Yeah, anyway, it's fine. There is an alcove <clears throat> carved in the wall. They didn't build it in, they carved it out afterwards. And since the wall is, is made of stones, that were actually placed there it's and very also interesting tree. to build a wall of stone and then carve into it. It must be a thick wall of stone. Yeah. Also, I do not picture that you would not like build the alcove if you wanted one, but perhaps they changed their mind later. But then you had to have stones thick enough to not dig through the wall. Okay, then she's just then they Kohai's just like, okay, I got it. <clears throat> so they dug completely through. What they did was they removed all the rocks here mm -hmm. and they just made like a stucco wall instead. To make the alcove because they didn't have rocks to do it again. Done. Okay. Uh, carved into the wall with a figure of a bear inside. The energy around it is achingly familiar. 
As I'm reaching for the figurine, the door flies open, striking the wall with its thunderous boom. Muriel, I have to often replace my door. Yes, I was going to be like, <laughs> when I enter the room, I enter the room. I walk into the room. As I walk into the room. As, as I, I walk, walk into, into the, the room. room. Purse first. I walk into the room. Purse first. Purse first. <clears throat> the thunderous boom sounded like actual thunder. Uh-huh. The shape in the doorway, as I turn immediately around to the doorway because the nook is not facing it, um, it casts a mighty unforgiving shadow because apparently it's very bright outside. I was about to say, whether or not you have to be brighter than the other two walls, you come from somewhere inside. Well, we don't have any light inside anymore because as soon as we picked up the figure, you know, we couldn't be summoning light anymore, so poof. I don't know. I have to understand because it says intense light. Uh, so we have to be able to somehow see. Okay, so it's shadow. very dark in the cabin and very bright outside, and he is backlit, so a massive shadow swoops in, but nonetheless, his eyes are illuminated so that his intense eyes pierce me from beneath a heavy brow, which the reader cannot see because of his hair and his hood. But Kohai can see. But Kohai can. Yep. Yep. There is a wolf. Even though this man completely fills the doorway, I can see a tiny nose poking around. <coughs> him. Whoop. It just like fits like into the doorway. Rectangle shape. Yes. Mm. Like those those cartoon monsters yes. that just fit in the doorway and fill it completely. And, and then, then they, they pop, pop out. <laughs> and then they become a little more shaped. Uh -huh. They become more whatever their actual shape is. Uh -huh. I always love that. It's so So he's funny. towering in the doorway, piercing eyes, glowing at you. And then like massive shadow cast into the darkness. Somehow and in this, between his legs. <laughs> there's this tiny <laughs> nose. <laughs> you know the dog runs up behind you and they want to see but they can't get around you so they just shove their head between your legs. Just, and Muriel's so big. Yeah, just like down between his knees or uh -huh. possibly like like uh, the top of his like calves. Uh -huh. Just poink! Yeah, next to the shins, there's a dog nose. Yeah, pretty much. Well, especially because it's a wolf. So people need to understand, wolves are not dogs. They're actually typically pretty fucking large. Interestingly, this wolf seems to have glowing eyes because there actually seems to be light around the there face. There is literal the rim eyes. lighting. Yeah, like that. that's glowing wolf eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a wolf? So silent, I didn't notice it at first. With jowls bloody and hackles high by the newcomer's side. <coughs> he doesn't actually fill the doorway. It's so big Wait, that a whole wolf can stand right next to him. I just thought he did when I was surprised at how big he was. Wait, what? what? Who's the newcomer? Uh, Muriel's the newcomer. So, person arrives! That person is now a newcomer. The wolf is newer, uh. so there's the wolf. The wolf is standing by the large boy's, boy's side. That is a way to just say the figure standing in the doorway. Yeah. Like... Uh, the new side? Hi. By the figure's side. side. Because we've already used figure, and this, the confusion that my friend had here was going, there's another person that's just arrived uh -huh. after this I'm like, are we suddenly talking about us? Are we talking about Astra? Yeah, that another was... Another other person. Yeah. It's the pocket mouse. God, it is. Beep. Beep. <laughs> uh, side. Is this Muriel? His mossy stare slides from me. To the figurine. With his eyes closed. Which I immediately <laughs> want, wish I was not holding. Um, because I am alone and mostly naked. And um, he's very large. <sighs> and I feel very much like an imposter in his house. I, I, the thing is, is I'd be like, just be like his green eyes. Must go be from, not like, especially like, like, especially if it's something that, that, that's separate. Unless they're really trying to go with the imagery again of that. He is this other thing. So you say mossy because you're invoking basically grass greenery, something that isn't a person, that basically. Person. I was having the problem of going, we didn't state that we knew the color of his eyes when we saw him. Not even it slightly. It wasn't his green gaze stares me down. Uh-huh. Or his emerald gaze or anything like that. So to me, <laughs> when I read mossy stare, I was thinking of it as more of a, a emotional adjective. I was going, too! What behavior or feeling is mossy? Okay, I completely admit I did actually think that and then I corrected myself. I just decided to go buy it, buy it because they keep doing some stuff. Because I was like, use angry, grumpy, frustrated, mossy. Gray, mossy, yeah. Uh -huh. You're like slightly fuzzy? I was like, mossy being like, being like dismissive maybe or S squishy or unfocused. You know, I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, no, no. Uh -huh. I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Anyway, slides uh, from, from me to the figurine. Great! Don't touch that. Too late! in my hand. In one stride, he is across the room, because it's very small. I cannot believe he can stand up straight in here. To be honest, I don't think he should be able to. It seems like the because room stretches and grows around him, even as it does not change. Which would actually be really cool, honestly, if that mm -hmm. was actually just a convention. Because the thing is, is it says that Astrid just sort of 
nonchalantly puts the clothing up. So he can reach to the roof. The, the, and he's the supposed beams. to be way he's shorter like, than Muriel. And I'm like, Muriel just being able to catch. I was walk I walk in, in. And I fill the room. I'm and going, such if a Ezra presence and such can a... just reach up and put something gently over the um, beams, the uh, support beams, yeah. the cross, cross beams, cross beams, cross beams, then Muriel walking straight in, I would give the, like, is Muriel taller than Asra's arms reached up? Because I feel like his head is. Because I always feel like, in general, Muriel is just a titan. Yeah. Like the way that they describe him. And then someone one... goes, yeah, he's like 6'5". And I'm like, that's not huge. He's not very big at all. He's broad. Lame. It's okay. I think he's taller than that, but I'm not sure. I have no idea. Mm. Um, looming over me like a mountain, gathering storm clouds at its peak. Even though I cannot see anymore because it's very dark in the room, I think. He doesn't meet my eye, watching my hands for movement as if I'm about to strike. The smell of myrrh meets my nose. It is something we use frequently in the shop, so I know exactly what it is. Just like when I describe all other smells. I have many labels. I know so many smells. I mean, honestly, that would work really well, but I wish they would actually, like, use Describe that? that? Yeah. Him and his many belts. <clears throat> I'm like, you've got four visible belts, my bro. Him Five, sorry. and his Final Fantasy character. He does! He's like Final Fantasy well, belts I mean, everywhere. One, like, it's, two, yeah. Sorry, he's got two on each, like, assuming three. he has arms. That's actually There's... a bracelet there. Oh, it's, it's still like, you bracelet have a belt. isn't a belt. It could just be slid on. I mean, I mean, right. You're not welcome here. <gasps> Faust pops up behind my head, Plink. startling Muriel away. His fast shuttle moves out of my path to the door. Also, Him. Startles like a rabbit. Uh, um, Faust, I'm in Jack of the Box. Poing! Wah! Jump scare. <laughs> also, the wolf doesn't exist anymore. No, the wolf does I not I forgot exist. completely about the wolf when he came over to me, and now that my path is clear, the wolf is nowhere to be seen. You know what I usually think of whenever we're interacting with Muriel? Like, this is this is completely me. Huh. But do you remember the uh, the animation style for, like, the Book of Kells? Oh. The Secret of Kells yeah, and, like, and that. And uh, Song of the Sea. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So that studio always makes me think of Muriel. Okay. Like the way that he's always described as, okay. I fill the room. Because remember how they draw characters filling weird spaces. But also and... like the dad in Song of the Sea. He's yeah. That, he's that built. Yeah, he is. He just, he just fills the doorway, fills the room. Yeah, uh-huh. He's chonky, huge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's genuinely what, what I think of. It's basically that far more, you know. Also, if you don't know about um, The Secret, the Secret of the Kells. Kells or Song of the Sea or the studio that makes them, one, I totally recommend you look them up if you like animation at all. Yes. Two, the stories are both very sweet and interesting, even though they have complex, deep emotional stuff going on. Yes. I, say, and I will also, say, I think I liked The Secret of the Kells better. Song of the Sea has Stunning music. <coughs> yes, it does. Beautiful freaking music. Mm-hmm. Like, you could even just go listen to the soundtrack. It's great. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, out of my path to the door. Just as Astra shoulders it open, it was closed again. Slams the door open. There is him Walks and Wolf in. in the door. Door slams closed behind door him. Door swings creaks. gently closed behind him. Door, I, I would it. think, I need to say, I would think. That if I were terrified of this man being here, I would notice. I would notice the door slowly swinging shut and removing my only escape. I was about to say if that's horrifying. horrifying. Yeah, that would be frightening. Terrifying. He swings it open. He takes one giant step forward, filling my entire eyes with, and I hear the soft creak as the door closes slowly and this dramatically. Thunk, this this thunk or click and as the it is glitter done. of the paws of the wolf. Like you'd be on hyper. Like I'm gonna die. Well, but I can't hear that because it's very soft dirt floor. I don't know. They seem to not be able to, to decide. Muriel didn't make any sound stepping over to me. Oh, that's true. That's so true. it's okay. Okay. Uh, just as Astra shoulders it open. Didn't even notice it was closed. Arms laden with wood. I panic more. Was not welcome there. <laughs> yes! Chapter 2, the hermit. Amazing. Astra, okay. what bullshit is this? Hello? I know you don't <laughs> like people, far. but I can't be bothered to remember it. Uh-huh. Astra stands in the doorway, looking from Muriel to me. To Faust, Faust, to the wolf, which I now can see again, and back to Muriel. Muriel, you work well, you look well, you do banana. She, I'm sorry, every time, banana? Yeah, banana. The wolf's name is banana? Banana. I think banana. Honestly, I can see Faust just being a shit the whole time. Banana. <laughs> banana. <laughs> banana, you jerk. You are like this mean older sister, Faust. Banana. banana! <laughs> <laughs> she... Did she did she catch something? Uh no. Oh. Muriel draws back his heavy hood, which I can nonetheless see everything beneath. 
as the wolf skulks over to Asra and paws at his foot until he scratches her between the ears. This is suddenly a really big tiny cavern because she can stalk over to him, not take a step in his direction. Banana! <laughs> <laughs> I love Sorry. that. I just picture Faust staring at this very put out Inanna, just going, Banana! Just thrilled. Faust looking deeply <laughs> pleased with herself. <laughs> Banana! <laughs> also, um, in, in the event that none of you know this, if any of you do ever make art inspired by our playthrough, even if it's not considered fan art or anything, and you send it to us, either on like Tumblr or tag us on Instagram or anything, we will absolutely share it with everyone. Oh, absolutely. We will put it up there and put it out there and be like, look at this cool thing that was inspired by our uh -huh. RBS. Yes. So, so please, if you ever do want to, we have um, an email on YouTube that you can send it to. Yep. Or again, there's there's Tumblr or uh, uh, Twitter, Twitter. And we can be contacted. Like, you can just, we do not mind like a cold call of, here's a thing I drew. Uh -huh. I have a fan art! Runs away. Yes, pretty much. And again, if it even is just inspired by, it doesn't uh -huh. matter if They're it's like, actually a They're like, I love this fucking line that was just really funny. It got it to me. Or whatever it was. Yep, yep. yep. All right. Um, between his ears. Between his ears. It got away. You look exhausted. You, sir, look exhausted. I am. Quite like this got back from the ball. The beast was here at the desert to give us a hide. And Anna, what did you get a bite out of? <laughs> Asra scratches between her round brows, peering into her intelligent eyes. I peel myself off the wall. That sounds right, actually. That's accurate. Poink! I... I smashed myself against the wall, but carefully, so I didn't cross oh, the post. Oh, 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 it's like a, that, so it's a, don't touch the thing. You get backed into the alcove and, like, suction cups your way around the shelves and the objects. Yep. Nope, I will not be and on then, anything. And then you unstick yourself from the wall and just casually, like, reach over your shoulder and set it back on the shelf. Uh -huh. What? And but you also, gently rearrange yourself because you're still naked. I am still going. <laughs> you have this open, like, uh, like jacket, jacket thing. thing. And you have this sort of little shawl scarf thing that basically sort of creates a loop to cover your, your breasts. Uh -huh. But there is literally nothing covering <clears throat> your entire nether regions. Like, belly button down, you are nude, except for the sides and back of you. Yep. And I'm like, the fact Unless that... there's a split in the back, and then you just ass out. And then, then booty. <laughs> Pew! <laughs> it's a hot year down, I guess. It's, you know what I did is I shoved my hands in the pockets, and then I just pulled them forward, and I was like, you know what? Butt is fine. Honestly, <laughs> though, if, if there was Hospital no... Hospital gown look is a great <laughs> thing. No. I was say, if there is no split in the back, though... Kohai would not be able to get it around. No, no, pants, I know but that. Yes. But I'm just like, hospital gun, <laughs> boink, me in the like this. Yes, I can see it. The fact that you are standing there half naked and Asra doesn't react is really funny. I also mind. think it's really funny, though, that Muriel is not reacting. So I can see Muriel only sees figure because you're looking away from him, you know, and you look over your shoulder so you're covered mm. from the back. And then Unless he does not, does not recognize Asra's <laughs> clothes. <laughs> does it? Wow. Asra. <laughs> uh, so bang! Wait! <laughs> see, his, see his pale booty in the light, in the light. <laughs> oh boy. Pale booty in the top. Yes, it is art. And Muriel just closes the door quietly and walks away. Dog. Eh? What happened? What, what are we doing? Banana! <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see this little fucking shit goblin that just sort of meanders around. Trolling everyone. The reason that Faust uses small words is because you are too simple-minded for her greatness. Yes. And she's just like, it's for your benefit. Uh -huh, it's for your benefit. She has small words. Banana! <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I peel myself. Moon! <laughs> Off the wall. Full moon. <laughs> I am a little embarrassed about being half naked in front of everyone. <clears throat> and especially someone but I don't really remember. I do realize that I have mud caking the whole front of me. <laughs> so I might be fine! So, so perhaps, even though the mud might be thin, it adds an <laughs> element of modesty. <laughs> <laughs> an element of modesty! Mouse? <laughs> 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 Picks up mud with tail and gently wipes it on your face. So Majesty! Majesty. It's modesty. Majesty. It's modesty. You finally got that I was oh, making sorry. a pun. All right. I <laughs> peel myself off the wall. I didn't see it. It ran by. Okay. So something ran by. And as it ran by, Inanna leans over and takes a chomp out of it. And gets so much out of it, even as it's running by, with, with biting and gripping teeth rather than like slicing teeth. 
that she gets blood all over her face from that one thing. So her entire muzzle, and then it sounds like it's sort of like down over her fur. Her ruff a little her, bit. Her, her ruff. So the thing that, okay. So if you don't know this, here is a magic trick for all of you guys who want to write wolves. Wolves do not have sharp teeth. What they have is biting, grabbing weapons that will puncture and hold things. Yeah, they don't they slice. They don't slice. Nope. Now, yeah, sure, if you're yanking away, it will, quote, slice through your skin, but it, that's more it, like ragged tearing. I say, yeah, it doesn't slice, it slicing. tears. So there is actually a legitimate difference. Like, now, for example, Tyrannosaurus Rex, who had one of the biggest, like, bite force damage-wise bites ever. Like, crunch through things. Crunchy bite, like, bitey through things. Mm -hmm. Their biggest thing was is their teeth were largely used to hold crap, not like slice things. Yeah. So, so slicing things are like uh like uh like uh, very very sharp talons or claws or like um weasels have sharp teeth. Mm -hmm. Weasels do have sharp teeth that are actually can slice things. And uh huh. I, I think say, badgers have gripping teeth. More mm, concerned. I'm trying to remember. I was to say also like cats have slicing teeth. Mm hmm. Cats have sharp pokey teeth. Uh huh. Which can also be used to grip. But due to the fact that they're more... So one of the things also is about basically how they uh, eat and also what they eat. So wolves, <clears throat> in general, what they will do is they will grab hold of meat and then push with their, you know, their feet or mm -hmm. like yank with their head and tear it apart. They have a lot now, of muscles. Something important like in their neck. around all of that. If something is running past and you grab a bite out of it, the blood is going with it when it goes. It's yeah. not soaking back onto your face because it takes a second for the vascular process to get through and bleed after you've removed the chunk. And if you remove the chunk with the inside of your mouth, you're not getting blood all over you. There's also... Unless you spit it out and then rub your face all over it and then swallow it. And they go, yes, this is what I wanted. But I, I'm, I'm just like, I find that to be so funny because people do that. And I'm like, you really are just trying to cause drama. Oh no, Nana's got blood on her face. But this, also like... a strange animal has blood on its face. And I'm like, but why? Like, you could have just had a wolf come inside. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. Right. It ran by. Yeah. She said it tasted foul, but not like a bird. Sneezing disdainfully, the wolf skulks past me to the pile of furs in the darkest corner of the room. Is the implication which is, here that she somehow bit a ghost? Which is all the corners of the room, because the fire is out, and the door closes after you come in through it. So we are in... Near pitch practice. Just now, so you know. Unless Astro is propping the door open with his foot. Or somehow I still have magic nose ring of light or something. Or, because... or in fact, the door does not close itself. I just was so stunned that I did not notice Miro close it. Or Inanna close it behind him. Or Astro close it because he came in and he had to open the door again. Uh-huh. Exactly. I don't know. Where is the state of the door? I need to know because the door is the only thing providing light because we have stated uh -huh. that there's just tiny little embers in the hearth and this... This house is a black pit. And if we just peeled ourselves out of an alcove slash out of the wall in a hilarious fashion, then we probably don't have our little dowsing ball of, of light. plot anymore. Nope. Darkest corner of the room, which is already really dark. Which is all corners. Yes. When she passes, oh, me in the alcove, I guess that I'm next to, the darkest corner is next to the alcove. Um, but beyond the alcove, because she walks past me. Okay. If, if we're saying that we're standing, the viewer, like at the door side of the cottage, okay, because the walls on the left and right are just walls and then you have the hearth at the back, right? Then to the right side of the hearth as facing the screen, which you are as well as us, then that's where there's, there's statues and things, but also like the little bear seems like it's not an alcove. It seems like it's just on a shelf, according to the image in here. Mm -hmm. So there's something else in the alcove and the bear's on a shelf, but we're saying those are swapped in the writing. So you're back in that alcove, but you've stepped away from it just a little bit, and she has to walk from the area wherever Asra is near the door, past you to get to a pile of furs. So I'm thinking she's taking a really roundabout way to deliberately walk past you and intimidate you to go pa over to another corner. Because there's no way her to walk past it's, you. It's because Muriel is filling up the room. Okay, she had to walk around She him? had to walk around Muriel. Because he was too close to the table, and yeah. so she got past you, and then she had to go back around to the other side of the table and lay down. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Faust goes limp around my neck and slithers in relief from my shoulder to Asra's arm, which she can reach from here. Even though Muriel is between Asra and myself, she is a long noodle. Also at the same time... Okay, but her like balancing no, on no. your shoulders and just reaching out like a snake trying to go from one uh, branch to another, just reaching, balancing, reaching, balancing. Like okay, three I have feet seen a faust just hanging out. Boas in the air. try to fucking do that. Most yes. of them are actually pretty bad at it it's because hilarious. they re they have so much weight 
So the thing you need to understand is part of the reason that boa constrictors is that they store a lot of fat because they are uh, uh, waiting predators. They, they hang around for the food to come to them. Mm -hmm. They don't, I can't remember what it's called again. I keep forgetting. Ambush. Ambush, Ambush. thank you. I so they wait in place and they basically store a crap ton of fat on their bodies, right? So that so, they can wait a long time. Uh-huh, so they can wait a really long time and it works out great for them. Mm -hmm. Most boas really don't have that much strength and add, like for like keeping themselves up and especially out. that far out. The most snakes that I've ever seen be able to do that typically tend to be venomous in some capacity mm -hmm. and also much smaller. Smaller. They I are thin say. noodle snakes <laughs> and they go Whoa. like if you've ever seen a vine snake, they look so fake. They're so much fun because they are like thin but they can go Whoo. they can just hold on to something and just like like lean their body way out along it like just oh, stretch it's out it's really cool they have so much power i would say and i have seen uh, basically uh pythons and constrictors try and they just they they, they basically reach off of one person trying to go to another and they sort of bounce down immediately and so uh -huh. would have to rebound themselves and they're like oh. but like <laughs> We're saying I we're just... in a small room, but Muriel is between us and Asra. Uh -huh. And Vow slithers from us onto Asra, and I am stunned. And also, stunned. I need to ask, what is slithering in relief even about? Was Faust actually alarmed by the wolf? Was Faust alarmed by... So, Faust but... was alarmed by the wolf's howl, and then Faust performed a jump scare on Muriel, and then we haven't heard from Faust since. Yeah, so I'm like, slithering in relief? Why? Because of the wolf howl is no longer relevant? Well, I mean, Five we were talking about... Five ago! Well, see, the, the only thing I have in this case is it's Inanna, and I'm like, but why Inanna? And also... Banana! You are not... What? You also know Inanna. Yeah. So what? What right. the fuck? They've Ashes actually, are. like, lived together. Right? Well, shouldn't we get introductions out of the way? I guess we should. I guess? <sighs> this is Muriel? Muriel! This is Kohai, because he has to gesture across and Muriel. around Muriel, because you're on the other side of Muriel. Like, okay, okay, so Faust reaches out and cannot stay up, so goes over top of Muriel's uh -huh. shoulder. Hold and Muriel to hold still. Puts arm up. Snake, travel along. Thank yes. You. I was going to say, Muriel, who recognizes Faust, just puts like an arm out like a falconer, and she just slides along that uh -huh. and then goes to Astra. Does the other arm, sort of like this. So it goes from one arm to the other. And then gets to Astra. And, and we, we don't Astra. mention it, because we're trying not to talk about Muriel. Because we're terrified. We don't talk about Muriel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about Muriel. We don't talk about Muriel, because we don't remember him. Because we don't know him. <laughs> yes. yes. Wait, talk about what? Who? What? Who? Hmm? Hi. Right, anyway, uh, this so is Kohai. <laughs> we're going to have to find out the ramifications of this interesting room placement and um, the introductions in, in the, the next, next one. one. That was fascinating. Yeah. So thank you very much. I guess. Why did they tell us? us where people are placed in the room and then if they're not fuck around with it? Going to interact with how people are placed in the room again. This is an author. This is this is the author is telling you what's important by telling it to you. Right. So it doesn't matter where people are standing in a room or where they are in reference to each other unless the author tells you what's happening. Yes. And then you care about it. So you can literally have 30 people in a room and have them all talking to each other. And it doesn't matter where they're all standing if you never tell the audience. Right. But if you say Genevieve is standing next to Lawrence and Christina is across the room and then Lawrence whispers to Christina, then you have a problem. Yeah, exactly. Which is exactly what drives me nuts. Uh -huh. Because the thing is, okay, so especially with short sentences like that, that usually means that very little if no time passed at all. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things in writing where we've talked about before where we feel like the writing could have been better in here. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that it could have been improved in some of their scenes was not to use but and then like suddenly go to a and then ta-da, something really fast happened it's uh -huh. a simply stop and then use short sentences to convey speed yes. don't don't you know truncate basically things don't longly elaborate and deliberate over various things and then be like it happened so fast i had no idea and i'm like and so, you took 300 years to get through four paragraphs say, without you rambling about how pretty it was and then you said it happened in two seconds worth like okay. stop it and the biggest problem i had with this scene honestly is that we spent uh, what would essentially be a couple of paragraphs uh -huh. talking about how dark it was getting and how the light was going away and how we couldn't see anything. And we have not mentioned that we're still holding our light despite being incredibly startled, which I assume it went out when we did that because you need focus. Uh -huh. I would say, and so now you can see everything in the cabin, even though the door closed afterwards. Mm -hmm. And we could see Muriel's eyes and we could see the details of the, you know, the wolf and everything. And also... 
Asra did not cast a shadow at all when he came in, and light did not flood in from the door at all when he came in. So it feels like you made an entire plot point of, oh no, the light is going away, and then you shelved the light and forgot about it. Yeah, which is really fucking annoying. Anyway, again, it and it doesn't matter if they didn't say it was important. It's also really frustrating, too, because it literally eliminates any amount of dramatic tension that you had it all built up, and it doesn't maintain itself. It makes the tone very jarringly all over the place, because nobody's keeping track of anything, your character doesn't have any internalized, continual, basically, perceptions of Muriel as this big, huge, giant, scary thing, and then loud noises would probably still surprise you, so even, you know, Astro just opening the door, you're like, oh god, what's that? You know, yeah, like, and... more things. Like, it just... It's not well done. I say, and it's one of those things where, again, you get told this is a priority, and then without ever being told it's no longer a priority, it's just gone. Mm -hmm. But also, it doesn't affect your environment anymore. So you cannot care that it's dark anymore, but it will still be dark, even if it's not affecting your cares. Yeah. At any rate. Oh, God. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. We really appreciate having you here. We yeah. also love the fact that we've got a bunch of new faces around. So say hi, hello. hello. It's good to have you. Uh, if you if you have any thoughts, if you'd like to like, comment, subscribe, share the videos. Honestly, it's still doing a lot. Obviously, it got you here. Yay. <laughs> so thanks to all those people who have been doing so. And uh, we really do appreciate, honestly, the any amount of interaction we get on these. These are always fun. It's great. Uh, please also feel free to go check out our co and our Patreon and our Twitch. There are links in the description. We'd love to see you there. And I have been Scandal. And if you've never been to Twitch before, you can actually um, check it out on the website. It's just a bunch of streaming stuff. It's just people doing things live. Uh -huh. I did not have any familiarity with Twitch at all when we started one. <laughs> and I was like, what is all of this anyway? And it's just, it's kind of a cool way. It's like like a lot of people hang out live in Discord. It's just like that. But it's with kind a, with... of like going to a movie theater where it's just you and your friends. And, you know, your friends are talking to the screen. And you all screen. talk. It's a little bit like a Skype call, but with video games. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway. Anyway. I have been Lyles. <gasps> and it, and was it was great playing, playing with you. you. Bye! Bye.